friends jumbo welcome back to another video welcome if this is your first time here today i'm gonna talk about the expected cost of living for international students in the u.s this has been a highly requested video and i'm just gonna go ahead and give you a complete breakdown of how much you expect to spend if you come to study in the u.s as an international student we're gonna talk about everything we're gonna talk about rent, we're gonna talk about utilities, and we're gonna talk about all the other possible expenses. So I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you do, don't forget to leave a like. If this is your first time here, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you. When coming up with the cost of living for international students in the US, there are two things to consider. Are you gonna be living on campus or are you gonna be living off campus? Living on campus is always the more expensive option, at least in my opinion. And I'm gonna give you guys some numbers just to show you that living on campus is actually pretty expensive. So the average cost of room and board for living on campus in the US is $11,950 for spring and fall semester. We can figure out how much you're spending on food and rent on a monthly basis on average if you live on campus. So we're gonna go ahead and divide 11,950 by nine. We're dividing it by nine because spring and fall semester have a total of nine months. It's gonna give us $1,328 so if you're living on campus, you're spending about $1,328 per month on food and rent. Of course, this number is going to vary depending on how much you pay in your school. This number is just an average, just to give you guys an idea. Keep watching and you'll see why this is too expensive if you're living on campus. So before we dive deeper, I'm just gonna introduce some business terms to make this a little bit more organized. I promise you it's not gonna be anything complicated. So when we're talking about expenses, we have variable expenses and then we have fixed expenses. Variable expenses vary from month to month while fixed expenses stay the same from month to month. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the fixed expenses. Our first fixed expense is gonna be rent. So let's assume you decide to find an apartment that's two bedrooms and it costs you about a thousand dollars a month. If you decide to find a roommate, you're gonna split the rent and you're gonna end up paying five hundred dollars for rent each. So let's keep that number in mind. For rent, you're paying $500 in this scenario. Second fixed expense is gonna be utilities. Utilities pretty much stays around the same amount every month. And utilities include stuff like water, sewage, recycling, trash, and all that kind of stuff. And technically, utilities is considered to be a variable expense, but I put it under fixed expense because most of this stuff that I put on fixed expenses are things that I feel like you can control your usage and at the end of it all, you're gonna spend about the same amount every month. So let's assume that you're paying $100 every month for utilities, but let's remember that you have a roommate. So you're gonna split that $100 and each of you is gonna pay $50 for utilities. You're also gonna pay another fixed expense, which is gonna be internet. Let's assume that you're paying $100 every month for internet. And that's like on the higher side because you can pay a little bit less than that. It's gonna depend on the company. It's, you know, it's all gonna depend. But let's just say you're paying $100. You have a roommate, you're splitting, and that's going to be $50 every month for internet. Your other fixed expense is going to be your phone bill. And let's assume that you're paying $50 a month. Again, that's pretty expensive in my opinion. It's going to depend on the company. I'm also going to do a video for you guys to give you some suggestions on cheap phone plans in the US. But that's going to be for that video. So let's just assume that you're paying $50 for phone bill. Now let's add the fixed expenses together. We have $500 for rent, we have $50 for utilities, we have $50 for internet, and then we have $50 
for phone bill. That's gonna give us $650 for fixed expenses. Now let's look at some variable expenses. So for variable expenses, I have grocery on the list because in some months I spend more money on grocery shopping than others. So for grocery shopping, I am gonna put that as $200 a month. And then another variable expense is gonna be miscellaneous expenses. This is gonna be stuff like subscriptions. So I'm just gonna put that as $50. So our total for variable expenses is going to be $200 for grocery and 50 plus $50 for miscellaneous expenses. That's going to give us $250 for variable expenses. Now let's add the fixed expenses and the variable expenses together. That's going to be $650 plus $250. That's going to give us $900. So if you live off campus, you're going to be spending about $900 a month. And of course, this number is going to vary depending on what state you live in. If you live in New York, your total expenses is probably not going to be $900 a month. Let's just be honest. So it's going to depend on stuff like what state you live in, whether you live in a city or a town and things like that. But just on average, it's going to cost you about $900. And then remember what the average cost of living for on campus was? It was $1,328. And actually the $1,328, that was only for food and rent. So if we add miscellaneous expenses and we also add phone bill because the school is not going to pay your phone bill for you. So $1,328 plus $50 for miscellaneous expenses plus another $50 for your phone bill, that's going to give you $1,428 if you live on campus. If we take $1,428 minus $900, you're going to get almost $500 difference. It's about $500 cheaper to live off campus. We have other expenses like clothes, eating out, going on vacations, and stuff like that. I didn't really include this in the expenses because these are not things that you spend money on on a regular basis. Like, you don't go on vacations like on a weekly basis unless, unless you're Elon, Elon Musk. <laughs> he doesn't even go on vacations on a weekly basis, does he? And as I said earlier, some of these costs, like rent, are gonna depend on what state you live in. I'm just gonna give you guys an example to give you guys some perspective. The average rent for a one bedroom in Minnesota is about $1,500, while the average rent for a one bedroom in New York is about $3,600. These are two states in the US, but the price for a one bedroom in New York is twice the amount of a one bedroom in Minnesota. So again, this is something to put into consideration. Also, even within the same state, the prices are gonna vary depending on whether you live in a city or you live in a small town. If you live in a city, it's definitely gonna be more expensive. For example, in Minnesota, as I said, the average rent for a one bedroom is $1,500, right? But that $1,500 is based on the capital, which is St. Paul. But if you come to other small towns, like the town that I live in, you can get a one bedroom for as cheap as $600. So there's also going to be a difference on whether you live in a big city in a state or you live in a small town in that state. Another thing is that you're probably gonna have additional expenses. For example, if you decide to buy a car, then you're gonna have to add gas into your expenses. If you also decide to add something like insurance, you're also gonna have to add that in your expenses and it's all gonna add up. My advice is that when you come to the US, especially if you're really tight on budget, then be smart. Be smart with your money. So for example, when you're trying to find apartments, you don't really need an apartment with a balcony because a lot of times an apartment with a balcony is gonna cost more than an apartment without a balcony. Also, 
when you're starting out instead of living on your own in a one bedroom apartment maybe you can find a two bedroom apartment and find a roommate when you're starting out just find a decent apartment you don't need to live in a luxury apartment you don't need to live in the richest part of the neighborhood you know just find a find a place that's safe but then a place that you can afford and then once you graduate and get a job you can go ahead and buy yourself your dream house for now, I would just encourage you to find a decent apartment in a safe neighborhood. And a lot of times, if you're not trying to be bougie and spend a lot of money on unnecessary things, you're going to end up spending way less money. So as I said, I'm going to do a video for you guys to give you some of the cheap phone plans in the US and I, I'm hoping that you guys are going to find that helpful. Otherwise, as far as cost of living for international students is concerned, that's all I have for you guys in this video. I hope I didn't make it too complicated. I wanted it to be a little bit organized and I hope that you guys can appreciate the effort that I put into doing that. And that's all I have for you guys in this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. And if this is your first time here, please don't forget to subscribe. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!